morning guys and welcome back to the channel. Today we are putting a high flow air filter on Project Grandma and it's going to cost us less than 40 bucks. So stay tuned. And before we get started you will note that I am wearing today my S&R motoring t-shirt which I reached out to the boys Scott and Randall. Uh, to pick up this new shirt and uh, it's a commemorative 4th of July shirt and why do I say that? Well take a look at this. It was a red, white and boost t-shirt and I figured it would be great for Junior seeing how he's now driving the uh, Hyundai Veloster and I just wanted to make sure I had an opportunity to show it off to you guys because I try to support all of the channels that I watch, especially the small ones who rely on merchandise to help uh, earn a few bucks on YouTube. So having said that, if you guys check out the first link in the description box below, you will find a link to Old Car Auto Guide t-shirts. I hope that you will take a look. So the first thing that you've got to do when installing a high flow air filter on a Crown Victoria or Mercury Grand Marquis or Marauder is you got to find the right one. Now I just happened to follow a guy called Mr. Random Reviews and he has a couple of these pla Panther platforms and one of the air filters that he used was the Spectre. So this is the one that I picked up at his recommendation and the part number on this is 9732. I picked it up on Amazon.ca and I paid $38.66 Canadian for it so it was less than 40 bucks and because I'm a Prime member that gave me free shipping right to my door. I had it in two days. So here's what we're going to do. Basically we're going to remove the original air box which is simply going to be taking the uh, band clamp off of here. We will remove the mass airflow. The box is held in with a couple of uh, nuts and bolts here and we're going to remove the whole thing. The idea is to take this air filter with its opening here on the end and we're going to make it fit this opening right here on the air breather. So let's get things taken apart and we'll show you what we're doing as we go. So these two little clips right here, you're just going to snap them up, flip them over and we're going to remove this, uh, or not remove it, but loosen up this clamp right here and that just peels off and then this just lifts up from this side. So this piece right here we are going to have to save. Now some of these are different on different model cars. Some of them, this little end is kind of fused right into the box. This one actually is bolted on. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna undo the bolts. We'll trim off the excess plastic so then it fits right inside the new filter. So there's three 12 millimeter nuts all together. There's two here and then one up front. And just like that, we've got it apart. So another thing that I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this mass airflow sensor off because we will be trimming plastic and I don't want any plastic to get inside there and compromise that new sensor. If I had to buy a new one, they're probably in excess of about a hundred bucks. So we're gonna take those screws out, get that sensor off, and then we can trim off this plastic. So what we've done is we've got this thing secured very gingerly in the vise, and uh, around this outside edge, we're just gonna take the uh, my little cutting wheel, and we are gonna cut all the way around it. So uh, let's do that. All right, so now that we get all the corners off, we'll take it over to the bench grinder and we will smooth these edges out, get rid of the big bulky stuff. So we've got this rounded up here pretty good, so we're gonna go do a test fit, see how well she fits inside that filter. So she's still quite big, but one thing about this filter is it's got a couple of different adapters that just kind of slide in and out, depending on the size. These are universal fit. So this little piece of rubber comes out and then we can try it again. And I would say we're still a little bit on the big side. Now there is one more adapter in there. And pop that one out. And now we're too big. So we've got to just trim it down a little bit more. All while making it fit within that middle adapter. So let's keep grinding. Okay, so we've got our piece to fit into the adapter. Everything is kind of good and tight. We do. We do have this big clamp that came with it, so we will tighten that on there. Now we'll go get our mass airflow, we'll plug it back in, 
and then uh, we'll finish up this job. So also you'll want to keep in mind that physically there are two ways that this mass airflow can fit in there, but there's only one way that they want the airflow and it's labeled right here. It says airflow. You might not see it on camera, but it's pointing that way into the motor. So let's get this thing hooked back up and we'll be done. So who's excited to hear how this thing sounds? I know I am. Let's start her up. Well, there you have it, guys. That's just a quick video to show you how to custom install a $40 high-flow air filter into a Panther of 2004 Grand Marquis. Now, I know in some of my last, in my last video, I talked about a cold air, and granted, we're not doing cold air. We're just simply doing high flow. We want this thing to breathe a little bit better on the front end as well as the back. So we've already done the exhaust. Now we're doing the air. And uh, I'm not expecting any horsepower increases necessarily, just that this thing will breathe a little better. So once we get it out on the road and do a little test drive, uh, we'll see if it does react any different than it did before. So that's how you install a Spectre high flow air filter on a Panther. All right guys, so we're out here on the highway and I'm getting ready just to do a quick pull with grandma. And the only reason why I wanted to do that was because as I was pulling onto the highway, I kicked it down. And with that new air breather, this thing honks. Do I notice any more power? Well, not necessarily. But what I do notice is a clear, audible tone that really, really sounds good. So. I'm going to do a quick pull. You guys can judge for yourself and let me know what you think. Windows are going to be up because we are on the highway. It'll get pretty noisy. But windows are up and uh, let me know what you think. So I figure while we're doing this, we might as well do a zero to 60 and quarter mile time and see what we get while we're doing it. All right. So I'm going to hit start. Ready, set, go. seconds is what we did the uh, quarter mile in it's not really quick but what did you think of the sound could you hear the difference between this and the previous video maybe not but it just seems to roar a little bit more with the difference between the exhaust and the, the uh, high flow intake so we'll uh, we'll do another hit and see what you think we're gonna try this test one more time so you guys can see it on the phone. And start. seconds and the uh, quarter mile in 16 seconds this time so I don't think we can complain too much about that this car does weigh approximately four and a half well probably 450 pounds heavier than my old Chrysler and the Chrysler is tuned up a little bit this car basically is stock so we've got a little bit of something to work with and uh, maybe we'll see if we can get this car back down into the 14 somewhere maybe even 13s who knows Got a long ways to go. Okay guys, with very little percentage left on this battery, I wanted to give you a quick update on some new vehicles on the lot. Since we sold our last two Nissan Rogues very, very quickly, I decided, well, it's time to have another one. This is a 2015, it's an SV model, so it is loaded up really nice. No leather, but it does have the backup camera, the full panoramic roof, the wheels, the fog lights, all the goodies. We've also got this 2014 uh, Jeep Compass, and again, it's loaded up really nice. It's got split leather in it as well as heated seat, satellite, right? all the goodies on that one as well. 
And here is the 2010 Santa Fe, sorry, 2011 Santa Fe that we took on trade uh, last week. And uh, we finally got it through the shop and everything is ready to roll on this one. And uh, it is for sale, probably somewhere around the 59.95 range, guys. If you're looking for a good front wheel drive SUV, uh, this is probably as good as they get. We've also got a couple of wholesale trade-ins. We've got this 2009 Pontiac Wave. Uh, it's got a few little uh, cosmetic uh, things on it, but it's only got 125,000 kilometers. So this will probably make a great $2,500 car, maybe even a little bit less than that, depending on whether or not we have to spend any money on it. And we've got this 2004 Kia Amante. Now they only made these for a few years, but this one is loaded up really, really nice. It's got the sunroof, the leather, heated seats, and AC still works in this thing. Uh, four almost brand new tires. Brakes are really, really good. Uh, a few blemishes in the paint here and there, but other than that, uh, the car really, really does look good. Again, this will probably be like, you know, $19.95 as is. And another one that should be hitting the lot today is this 2014 Hyundai Santa Fe XL Limited. New tires, new brakes all the way around. This thing has every conceivable option you could get on a Santa Fe, included heated and cooled seats, GPS backup camera, heated steering wheel, all the bells and whistles, and it's a seven passenger. And on that note, guys, we've got to end this video. Sussex Beard Oil is a consistent sponsor for these videos. Their link is in the description box below. Please check them out if you are bearded or non-bearded and looking for some beard products or some shaving kits. The Car Guy and Six Fan Show will be hosted on my channel this Thursday night. I hope you guys can tune in at seven o'clock central, eight Eastern or nine o'clock local time to the Car Guy and Six Fan Show where Grant, Tommy and I, Street Six Fan, host a automotive informational type show that helps grow other YouTubers and we talk about automotive stuff and uh, you know a lot of tips and tricks to growing your YouTube channel. Guys, stay focused on the windshield, not the rearview mirror. I love you all. God bless. Let's do it again real soon.